What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new around here, first of all, thanks for joining our community. We are so happy to have you. Second of all, my name is Jeff. I am the guy that does the videos around here, as well as the designing over at Homestead Studios. Now last week we talked about five kitchen design trends that I think are going to stand the test of time and be in style for years to come. This week I want to take a slightly different approach and talk about some design trends you might want to avoid or at least think twice about during your next kitchen renovation. Alrighty, I want to dive right into one of those hot button trends that we are seeing all over the place right now, open shelving. I mean, honestly, is there a more controversial kitchen design trend than open shelving? And I can't make this list without including it. And there's probably some lists out there that say open shelving is a must have in current kitchen design. But that is the beauty of open shelving. It is just a polarizing topic when it comes to kitchen design. Alrighty, so here's my take. Open shelving is great, asterisk, if it serves a purpose other than holding our everyday dishware. Who wants to grab a bowl or a plate every single time and, and have to wash it every single time before they can use it because it's covered in dust or grease or you name it. So what I like to use open shelving for in a kitchen is to hold non-essential, non-everyday items like cookbooks or maybe a fancy tea set that was handed down to you or some beautiful cookware that is only used every so often. There are some major pros to open shelving. They can help open up small kitchen spaces and make them feel larger than they truly are. Wooden open shelving can add a much needed warmth to a space that is often dominated by cold, stark, and hard textures. So when you sit down to either design your next kitchen or work with a kitchen designer, make sure to think long and hard about open shelving in your space and what you truly plan to use it for before just automatically throwing it in. Next up, I have a kitchen design trend that I wish would just disappear forever, and that is the over-the-range microwave. This trend has been in practice for years, but it seems like it is actually finally on its way out. We are moving in a direction that favors universal design principles, where we keep necessities accessible for the entire family. There are so many other options when it comes to microwave placement, including under-the-cabinet nooks, built-in with drawers, or even placed with wall ovens in tall pantry-style cabinets. Over-the-range microwaves always seem to be in the way of some way or another when someone is cooking and somebody always seems to need that microwave. And they do detract a little bit from the aesthetics of a design. Now with all that being said, sometimes you have no other choice but to put the microwave above the range and use it as a venting hood. There just isn't enough space in some of these smaller kitchens to eat a portion of the cabinetry to store a microwave. Now in some regards I would say go without a microwave if you can handle that. But for many of us who can't, it is the last resort and sometimes we do have to put it above that range. Alrighty, number three, pot racks. I get it, you wanna show off those fancy pots. Hey, no, no I really don't. I, I will never understand this one. Why, why do we wanna hang pots in our kitchens? There was a time when large pot racks placed over top of the island or hung on the back wall of the kitchen was commonplace. But thankfully we are moving far away from that place. Today's trend is to stash our pots and pans neatly away in a cabinet or a drawer below the countertops. This opens up sight lines with our kitchen and gives us the opportunity to hang what is really needed above our kitchen island. Lights. Lights so we can work at that kitchen island, not in a shroud of darkness from our pans. Now speaking of kitchen lighting, we did a video a few weeks back and I'll throw a link up in the top corner in case you missed it. It discusses all the varieties and types of kitchen lighting available and why it is so important in kitchen design. Man, we are flying through this list. Number four, farmhouse sinks. Let me clarify, I am talking about the large white porcelain style farmhouse sink and not the more modern style of apron sink that comes in a variety of finishes. I'm really curious how the farmhouse sink trend came to be, or even got its name for that matter, because every farmhouse I've ever been in had a stainless steel style sink in their kitchen, not a large white porcelain tub. So if you know the answer to that, leave a comment down below. Although many folks will never tire of the throwback charm of the farmhouse sink, they're becoming less and less common in kitchen design. Right from installation to use, these sinks are rather pesky. If you are dead set on an apron style sink and you have to have it in your kitchen design, my suggestion is to stick with stainless steel. It is practical and always in style. Number five continues with that old style, vintage style design, which is bright, bold appliances. 
The bright red or teal or yellow mini refrigerator tucked in the corner of your kitchen might look really cute and cool right now, but are you still gonna love it five years down the line? And even more so, is it actually functional when it comes to working and preparing a meal in your kitchen? For example, the fridge looks like a complete afterthought in this design with no real incorporation. Appliances are already one of the most expensive parts of a kitchen renovation, which is already an expensive renovation to begin with. So this isn't likely the place to play around with big, bold colors and take big risks. Save that for smaller items that are easier to change out down the line. So it seems like I have a bit of a theme going here with four, five, and six, because next up we have distressed cabinetry. Distress this, distress that, it's everywhere these days. It's an old piece of furniture painted with chalk paint and sanded down to reveal some of that wooden patina underneath and give it an aged, old look. And this style has crept its way into our kitchen cabinets. Unless you are truly after that rustic feel in your kitchen, avoid this look when it comes to your kitchen cabinets. Instead, opt for a single, small, standalone piece of furniture that can bring some of that rustic charm to your space without it becoming completely overwhelming. Maybe it's the third cup of coffee this morning, but we are just humming along on this list. And at number seven, we have kitchen desks. I'm not sure who thought a desk within the kitchen was a good idea, but I'm not entirely sure they were thinking clearly at the time because this is the last place to sit down and focus on work. Over time, we figured out that this space just becomes nothing more than a dumping ground for all sorts of clutter from drunk mail to school papers. This area within the kitchen is far better off served to increase the functionality and storage, whether it's through pantry, more countertop, you name it, it's better off than a kitchen desk. Now you might be thinking, well my kids do their homework at the kitchen desk while I prepare dinner. And that might be true, but I still think it is better served as more functional space for the kitchen. There is always the kitchen table to pay household bills or for the kids to do their homework while you're cooking a meal. And at the end of the day, it'll have to be cleaned off that table so you can actually sit down and eat. Therefore, it's a win-win for everybody. At number eight, we have minimalistic backsplashes. Tiled backsplashes are a fantastic addition to your kitchen. It protects your walls from splatters and excess moisture, and it can even give your space an eye-catching pop. But half-baked backsplashes should be a hard pass. Backsplashes need a defined start and end point. Well, I guess the start point's always defined by the countertops. But the end point should not be a random place on your wall. Rather, if you have wall cabinets, carry the tile all the way up underneath. If you don't have any wall cabinets, run the tile to the ceiling. Stopping at a random place in the wall can make the kitchen look unfinished and as though you ran out of tile midway through the project. Not a great look for any kitchen. And just like last video, I do have a bonus trend for you and that is knobless cabinetry. While that sleek, clean, and flat look of slab cabinetry with no protruding hardware may seem like a great idea, it'll be an instant regret the first time you need to get something in the midst of cooking. Although old school, knobs or cabinet pulls strike that perfect balance between pretty and practical. They're even a great way to inject some personal character into your kitchen design. And if that personal character isn't loved by the next owners of your home, they're easily swapped out for something they would prefer. Well, that does it. There's nine kitchen design trends that I think you should think twice about when planning your next kitchen renovation, whether you're doing it yourself or working with a designer. On that note, if you are trying to go it alone and feel stuck or want a little bit of help with your design, head on over to our website. We have a whole bunch of more great content there and you can check out our design studio. We would love to work with you guys. Thanks a ton for watching. As always, click that thumbs up and smash that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of our future content. If you are looking for some more videos on kitchen design, whether it's lighting, countertops, you name it, I'll queue a couple videos up for you there. Again, thanks a ton for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Should probably cut the coffee for the day.